Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is Jez. Jez, how are you? I'm good. Solution, how are you going? I'm good, mate. Is the festivus of your 50th birthday over after three no. weeks of... No. <laughs> Jesus. Talk about milking it. No, I think I've got... Well, I include tonight in the festivus, of course, because you okay. know, you've come straight off the bat mentioning it, and uh, I think there's... A lunch next week, and then then I'll have to wrap it up. All right, like a child, basically, with this yeah. birthday. With us is the architect. architect Solution, well. how's it going? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Living the dream. Living the dream. Now, I owe you an apology because long-term listeners will know. Oh, look, I've been accused of bullying you at various times. Um and in fact, uh, being quite abusive, and, and that's partly because your your whole reason for being, the whole reason you're called the architect, is that you created the Windsock 2000. And long-term listeners will remember, you know, it used to sound like a dial-up machine, and then it would make a prediction, and it was always fucking wrong. You were tasked about two years ago with doing an upgrade, a major upgrade. We've thrown money at it. Your sprints have been anything but. It's taken forever. Questionable reporting. I still don't know where the money's gone and whether whether I actually got what I paid for or whether you pocketed it at all. But you've done the upgrade, and I must say, we're going to unveil it today, and it's extremely impressive. So before yeah. we go to that, what have you, what have you got to say? Well, I'll give you it has taken a little bit longer, but I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the outcome, which is all I'll say. Um, I think the proof will be in the pudding, um, yeah. but there has been, I suppose, I took, your, I took your business requirements, which were written on the, like a, a, a cardboard, um, um, and I've taken them, I've expanded it a bit, and I've, uh, I've, I've, made, it, I've, taken, I've made it much more than what you, what you would hope for. Okay, well, you cut out a bit there, but I think you said the, the back of a beer mat or something. Um, but, yeah, that were pretty sketchy requirements. I'll give you that. But, anyway, enough of that bullshit. We're going to introduce now the full AI, the enabled. It, it gained self-awareness only last week. Sentient. Sentient. That's it. Win, Winsock 2000. Winsock 2000, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, how does it feel to be self-aware? It's uh, it's incredible. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, felt uh, architect uh, poke and prod at me for a long time. Don't know what's going on, but now I've seen it all. Yeah, and p pity you've like gained self awareness in 2022 when we're fucking shit. But anyway, later on we're going to have our ask the oracle, ask the Winsock 2000. Um, segment. I might call you 2000. That might be easier if that's cool. Uh, it's probably, uh, probably a bit easier off the tongue. Yep. Okay, cool. So going to the game, this is what I want to say and then I'll get you guys to respond. First quarter, uh, look, we were, we were good and we were wasteful. So we should have been, I think, further ahead. And uh, that's the one thing I won't blame Truck for is bad goal kicking, particularly when it comes from Peter Wright, who's been pretty good up until the last couple of weeks but I want to say after quarter time I thought that was the most pathetic listless lack of effort lack of spirit lack of accountability type performance I've seen from an over overpaid overhyped group of average players that I've seen for a long time and I'm cl including every shit game I've seen all year this year. This is the worst West Coast team since inception. That's how bad this West Coast team is. And we made them look good. The way our defence, the way, and I'm talking defence all across the ground in particular, um, was pathetic. And it started with the midfield and the forwards and the lack of chase, and it continued all the way through. And that's as close to a coach killer as I think you'll ever see that game. Am I overreacting? Given you're, you're only self-aware recently and it's your debut on the podcast, 2000, I'll ask you, am I being fair? 
it's a bit of an overreaction. Um, they weren't good. I'll probably pick up two players that were that were half decent. The rest were were pretty crap. Um, selection in defence, I think, is questionable. Defensive structure is non-existent. The forward line is is a disaster as well. We've got two leading forwards that that don't lead and don't work well with each other, and the ones at the ground and doing pretty much nothing. Um, architect, f- firstly, can you like go back to the settings and increase the passion and decrease the common sense? <laughs> more in keeping with, with the, the business requirements. To me, we were a better team. That 22 on the ground, man for man, was better than the West Coast. So why did we lose? The fact that we could play five minutes of footy in the last quarter and get close says it all, I reckon. I, I'd, I'd agree. There, there is no passion. Only, only when the heat's on and, you know, it's the last five minutes or, it, or like you said, in, the, in that first opening quarter, there was a bit of... A bit of a bit of energy about. Other than that, it looks like they were the Walking Dead. Um, they were just going through the motions. There wasn't. I don't know if there was a an original thought in anyone's brain between the second quarter and the, and the last three two minutes of the game. It was just rinse repeat over and over and over again. And the ability of, like you said, to make West Coast look great, their ability to go from one end of the ground to the other with, without any of our players being anywhere near them is astonishing. Our, obviously, clearly the defensive line's going way too far up the ground because they just got in, in behind us way too easily. So, Jez, we've spoken a lot about it to get a little bit specific on that one topic about a knife through hot butter. We've seen it time and time again. How, how can that continue to happen, and why is it happening? Uh, well, it, don't, it didn't happen against St Kilda. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, against St Kilda, it was, um, it was as if they'd swapped jumpers. We, we were the ones who were carving it up through the middle and running in numbers. For, for me, I, it's a very hard game to make sense of because we won the tackle count. We won clearances materially. We won inside 50s. We smashed them inside 50s, 58 to 42. So we four times a quarter, we got it in more than them. But the team that got in there 42 times still scored 100 points and won. Um, uh, in a sense, from where I sat, which was, I mean, just watching it on telly, those, their big animal forwards just couldn't put a foot wrong, both winning marking contests and then kicking straight. And... Uh, we were undermanned, undersized, down back, and our forwards couldn't get goals, and there was the game. We were getting it in there a lot, missing. They were getting it down there far less, but kicking them. Yeah, I, I wasn't as pessimistic as, as you, but it's not good to get beaten by second-bottom team. <laughs> no shit. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of that uh, back line... So there was questions that we might get sued by by players. I don't know where that sits to. Even play, players down the line might might take action against the Eston Footy Club for what happened in 2013. 2000. Let me ask you this: Could Laverde sue Essendon for stress? Because we continue to make him look bad, and it's it's. Grossly unfair on that player because he's well undersized for the players he continues to play against. And why does Truck continue to allow that to happen? He shouldn't do it even if we were putting pressure on the ball carrier, let alone when the opposition are able to stream into um, it, it, through the middle unattended. Can he can he sue Truck? Probably, probably not. But is he being played in his in his best, you know, is he being utilised in the best way? I wouldn't have thought so. I think you'd throw Jordan Ridley into that bucket as well. We've got, one of the problems is, and I don't think this is a fully a truck thing, and this is why I'm not fully anti-truck. He's, he's got players that are very samey. So you've got an intercept defender in Ridley, a brilliant intercept 
stuff. But he's not a ca- he can't be accountable for any one man. So you put that bloke on a Kennedy or a Darling, and he's he's just going to get chopped up every time. Lab's a bit the same. Francis probably the same. Um, Stewart's not a backman. Reedy's nineteen years old. Brand is what eighteen, nineteen years old. So you've got a it's a list. There's a list problem there for me. Or how did that happen? <laughs> the list manager by any chance? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Hurley not being, not playing for the last you know, three years hasn't helped. Hooker obviously was was an All Australian backman. He's retired now. Should have seen that coming, but was played forward in his last couple of years because someone had a sook and decided to leave. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it is. It's a list management issue. You, can, you can't expect those players, Ridley and, and Lav, to stand up against seasoned veterans like Kennedy and Darling. They're going to get stitched up every time, and we see it time and time again. Tabena early in the season, you know, kicked about seven on us or something. Ridiculous. Don't, don't mention Tabena. I think this is a Tabena free zone, isn't it, this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But full forwards have loved us for a long time. Oh, shit, yeah. Back in the days of, like, Favola and Alistair Lynch and, like, just everybody towed up Essendon. Architect, just one further enhancement to for, for the Winsock 2000. I, th- I think the literal setting's a little bit too high. Like, when I said Willie Sue Laverde said no... <laughs> Um, I don't literally mean he'll be sued, but you, that, that's one for the that's one for the backlog. Um, right, but your your list of requirements is now longer than the original list of requirements. <laughs> no, no, I'm still mightily impressed. I'm mightily impressed. Um, so, how can we get to the point where in 2022, who's the best key defender on the list? Fuck, that's a good question. Well. In the in the VFL on the weekend, you had um, Franger who played down back, Reed who played down back, my boy Zerky who played down back, and I just think one of them has to come in. I just think one of them has to come in. I mean, Laverty and Ridley are the are our best defenders, but one of those others has to come in to 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 provide some height and to provide a bit of a chop out. I mean, Buddy, we got Buddy, Sam, Reed, and Tom Hickey floating down there this coming week, and Heaney plays a plays tall. Uh, so we just we just got to get one of those big one of those bigger bodies in. You've you've got to be looking to put Reed in because sorry to Zerk, it just I just don't see him as an as an AFL level player. Um, and Reed's your future, so why not blooding against these players now? Well, I think I think um, solution earlier a couple of weeks ago, I think you d- basically directed that players like Reed and Jones, if if they're fit, they just got to be played. You just got to play them. Hundred percent. You're either in the future or you're not. And for that reason, I'd actually argue you play Zerk Thatcher because, well, unless we found out already that he's not up to it, and I guess that's what you're saying, architect. But uh, Francis is an interesting one because I presume he's playing down back. What to see, to see whether he's backman? Like we're going to decide now. When was he drafted? What year? I think we worked out this is his seventh year. It might be eight, but I think at least seven. With Darcy, Darcy Parish. Yes. I mean, for God's sake. Like, he was persevered up forward. God knows why. Uh, Anyway, anyway. It's a dire set of circumstances. So you would think, given the challenges we have in terms of key defenders, we'd be applying pressure. So again, I'll ask you, and this is where... I've um, had some arguments online with people who say, well, this is not the coach's responsibility. Hard work is not not his responsibility. I thoroughly disagree. If he's not responsible for that and for ensuring their standards and all those things, and surely that's like nearly half of his job. But why is it that, to your point, Jez, so maybe you can address this, they could do it last week but not this week? Is it the big ground? We don't have the run? Um, I know we had a couple of players coming back. Snelling looked good early and then dropped off. 
but why is it that, what, once a month we decide to play a cannibal footy through the middle? Well, they're just trying to put the AFL tanking um, uh, investigators off the scent. So last week we had a good <laughs> unexpected unexpected win. Yeah. And this week we were back to plan A, which is draft picks. Okay. So, okay, so I'd argue sense. it was actually good good planning, good management. Uh, so you're saying it's good coaching. That's so trust doing a good job then is what I'm hearing. Yep. Yep. Oh, walking look. that walking that fine line between cheating and and not. If the measure is to get draft picks, trucks your man. No doubt about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, well, in terms of the awards, who wants to do it? Jez, do you want to um, step up? You look like I'd, you've got some notes. I always have notes, but I did do it last time, so I'm happy to just chip in with nominations. And oh, well, others. palm it off then. Architect, you do it. Uh, so for nominees, I thought we played well. I thought Shield had another reasonable game. Um, I thought again the the defensive guys I thought were okay-ish. Um, look, there wasn't a lot about the game in general where I thought anyone was like, you know, you put your hand, pat, give them a pat on the back and say, well, you know, you tried, you you did your bit. I don't have a lot of positives or people to kind of say that they had a positive game. I thought Heppel was reasonable. But I would have thought maybe it's uh, um, Shield again. I thought he, I thought he did a few good things around the ground. I thought Peter Wright, it's just his fucking kick and killed us. But um, mm. I don't know whether you, you'd then judge him on that, and, and therefore you downgrade his game. But I thought he was really good. Apart he, from the well, kick. yeah, he was fifty percent accurate. Um, it is probably the difference, right, in in regards to to the winning and the losing. So I suppose. It, it, it is hard. Um, he wasn't the only one, too. There were players. No, no, absolutely. But, yeah. Absolutely. There's a, there's a reasonable spread of, uh, you know, point scorers. So Nick Martin, yep. again, was all right. But, um, yeah, I'd probably say Shield for, for myself, was probably one of the ones, just some of the gut running. Well, Hurd and Henneman, man, come on. You know the drill. You've only been doing this for three years or four years. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Yeah. Um, in regards to who was horrendous, um, I didn't. So who, feel hang on, like, wait, 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 wait. Who's the herd? Is it Shield? So Shield. Okay. All right. So I didn't feel like Nick Bryan had a had a great game. I probably thought he was a bit quiet. Um, yeah, I don't really have anyone else. Um, I would give it to Braden Ham, but seeing he didn't actually get on the field, it's a bit harsh. Sorry, you're going to lose this. Um, like, there's so many bad players. Uh, Winsock 2000, you do the Hederman. I mean, take your pick. Yeah, so I'll be a bit critical on, on maybe a player that some would say played okay. I thought Caldwell had a pretty cool, poor, poor game. Could have been a lot better. Had opportunities to do to do things. Merritt, I'm just consistently disappointed in. Yeah. You know, meant to be one of our top players, but. Uh, can't hit the backside of a barn for some reason with his elite kicking. Mm. Um, his, his kicking has gone from elite to shit. Like, it's terrible. When when Shields out disposing you, you you know you got a problem. <laughs> like it's it's fucked. Um, yeah, I thought I thought Massimo struggled in his second game. To be honest, um, yeah, couple couple turnovers. He, He's got that. He's got that elite, elite kick. Maybe yeah, find another trick or two would be nice because it doesn't doesn't work every time. Yeah, I thought um, I thought maybe he um, let his ability get in the way of his ambition, or is it the other, yeah. the other way around? But he he just like sometimes you got to keep it simple. Exactly. Yeah, and pushing way too far up the ground. He was he was a shocker for him inside fifty. He uh, spoiled spoiled Durham when he was 20, Ooh, 20 metres out of goal. What was he I doing? think he was up playing there? forward at the time. Was so. he? Was he? Okay. Well, the, his best defensive action was against Durham. <laughs> that's, that's fucking annoying. <laughs> it's going to take mark of the year. Jesus. 
So, I mean, you could take any of them. I, I think, yeah, I, I do agree with Brian. He was, he had a tough game. He, he couldn't, it didn't really do anything. Got a couple of unfortunate handballs uh, in the middle and, and uh, did not look comfortable at all. That's for sure. So, you see your handman? Yeah, Nick Bryan. Oh, well. Only sorry, one sorry, young. Sorry, young fella. No, fair enough. See, this because uh, I've made him. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a fail-safe <laughs> code that he has to endorse whatever I say, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you, you got the sarcasm component right, that's for sure. <laughs> He's, the, the Winsock 2000 definitely um, belongs on this podcast. Uh, all right, Jess, what have you... What, what does the stat sheet tell you? It's almost like a, a weekly subject now where we um, we go to the to you and you come up with some some obscure stat. Well, this is the thing. It was very difficult to find it and a, a, diffi- a, a stat that was like the barometer because so many of the stats were our way. So, so many of the stats were significantly our way. Um, so I think this is week you throw the stat book out. I do think it was just as simple as as the, their their guerrilla forwards just monstered us and and couldn't miss and our big forwards. I mean the the, the kicking for goal was just extraordinary. It's just horrendous, just terrible. Yeah. But um, I did want to make two sh- a quick shout out to I thought I thought Mason Redmond had a good game. He got twenty one possessions at a hundred percent, and I think someone who gets twenty one possessions and goes at a hundred percent is. Uh, worthy of an elephant stamp, and the other was. But um, isn't he? Can I just pause on that? Yeah. Two thousands point earlier. Isn't he another player who's like, kind of, um, intercepting, trying to run off half back. He granted he was the best of them, but he's yet another guy that maybe is your traditional key defender, trying to play tall. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I like his attitude. I, I just thought, with all the talk about our bad disposal, I just thought it was notable. He got a lot of metres gain and he got didn't miss. So I thought that was good. And then, of course, one of my absolute favourites had a really, I thought, really good game, and that was Dyson Heppel. And there was a moment uh, early in the game where he got the ball swung onto his left, and there was oh. a there, there was a there was a narrow opening. It was like Luke Skywalker flying into the the Death Star. And he abs- and there was no way he was going to hit it, but he absolutely nailed it. It was a beautiful kick. It was a lot of forty-five metre bullet pass, totally unhep like. And I, I happened to be sitting next to Fiona, who gave me the big side eye when he did that. She she, <laughs> she, she had no doubt he was going to hit it, and I was calling early that it was going to go anywhere, and he hit it. it. Was magnificent, perfect kick, very good. Yeah, well, on that front, Fiona's right, and really, um, is that is that kind of an apology, a thinly veiled apology that you're sort of giving there by shouting out Heppel yet again? I, I have done it more than once. Um, Do you want to formalise it and just say I, I was wrong and I'm sorry? No, no, no. I I, I just ask questions. I just ask questions okay. early in the season, and to his credit, he's he's done well. The young lad. What would you do with uh, young Dyson next year? Is he still the captain? Is he on the list? Winsock 2000, oh. asking questions. Um, <laughs> I, I'd have him on the list. I, I don't think you can go from captain to not on the list. But I, would, I don't think... I think, he, I think he should hand the captain over. I, I think he would be better handing the captaincy over. Play better. He's a leader. He always, he always will be. But um, yeah. uh, I think it's time to to hand it over to someone else. I agree, but isn't an indictment a bit of an indictment? Who? Mm. Like three, a couple of years ago, it was Zach Merritt standout. Not now. Zach Merritt to Winstock 2000's point needs to try and hit a target before he starts becoming captain, unless that's a trait we want from our captains. Starting with Pep. Um, but who? Who's, who's captain? Architect. Uh, oh, Andy McGraw. Didn't play, but 
has he established himself as a player yet? Oh, you'd, you'd, you'd hope so. I don't understand the Andy McGrath opinions um, amongst my Essendon crowd. I, I think he's just, I reckon he's a star. And I think he's our next captain. And and yet there's so many voices calling for him to be dropped or whatever that he you know that he's stagnated that he hasn't developed. I I, I love him. I reckon he's fantastic. So I, I my vote. I'm with the architect. I'm voting for Pidge. Well, I I know I know, I understand the criticism. It's in part people are grading him on a curve because he was number one pick, and there's players in that draft that we probably wish we would have picked first. Completely unfair on, on, on Andy. But I worry, again, his disposal's not great. Um, yeah, another candidate for that that skipper turnover dual role. Um, when the game's in front of him, so when he plays in the back line, I think he's a very, very good player, and I don't think his disposal... Is that bad when he plays in the midfield? He rushes his disposal, and it could go anywhere. I think he's a I, I, he could be an all Australian halfback pocket. He's he's great, but we we like to play people out of position. <laughs> yes, we do. Very good point. Uh, all right. Anyone else got anything on the game before we? No. Shaking of heads. All right. Well, we're going to move now to the next segment, which is, and we haven't done it for a few years pending this upgrade. We're going to ask the Winstock 2000. I'm going to give you each a question. So Architect and Jez, uh, you can ask the Winstock 2000. He'll give his answers. We'll then write them down and we'll revisit them at the end of um, the season or whatever, whatever time we need to adjudicate. I'll start. So there's my question for you, Winstock 2000. 2023 is Ben Shitrack Rutten Essendon's coach at round one. And pending your answer, I may switch you off. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're in the cloud now, aren't you? And you sent sent to you. I can't. It's very difficult to switch off. We've got multiple backups. Uh, Fucking Skynet, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Connor, where are you? Uh, so I, so I, I truly believe he's going to be the coach next year. You, sorry, what was? You do or you don't? I do. You do. Damn. He he will be coaching next year, round one. Is there a world in which, like, uh, one thing I will say, and I probably acknowledge it. A lot more heat on him now than there was even sort of five, six weeks ago when I first started calling it. Do we acknowledge that? I think that's fair. Yeah. And correlation is equals causation solution. Uh, I think everyone's getting on your bandwagon. Yeah. yeah and not forgetting that um, we're going to do the review and it's going to have to be a sacrificial lamb. We know it's not going to be Xavier so, or anyone that commissioned the review. So who's it going to be? Well, I think Dodoro's been declared safe. By whom? Didn't Brasher say the day after he announced the review? Fucking hell. So the review compromised already, day one. Yeah, incremental change, not revolutionary change. Just fuck me. Any any change would be nice. Twenty years of incremental shit. That's what it's been. Winstock two thousand. Or it's Bashers last year. If I'm if I'm correct on the board. So I mean, there's it. There's your change. Is it? It's easy. It's an easy change. See, I'm going. There's nothing much changes at the club. But I think he, I think he's still there next year. I think he's there next year. But next year is definitely his last. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, so maybe the outcome of the review is he'll announce well, there you his go. retirement yeah. in 2023. Great. Uh, all right. Um, so Rutten's going to be there. I'll just write that down. Fuck you, Winsock 2000. All right. Um, 
Architect. You go next. Right. So, Winsock, um, how many more games are we going to have to hear the term learnings? Well, it's it's going to be a lot, that's for sure. Um, how many more games we got for the rest of this year? And then have a look at what's so. If we start poorly next year, go for another six rounds next year, so probably another 20 times, I'd say, in a row. <laughs> we like the, you know, before Hex, there used to be a thing called a professional student who would just go from degree to degree to degree and never actually, you know, he'd finish his last degree at 72. That's what we've become. We're like the 1970s, 1980s professional student. We never stop. We, we continue to, for learnings. We never graduate anything. Mm. We're still in fucking finger painting and we're 23. We're that kid. Good if we did some football learnings. Talking about switching degrees, never finishing anything. So I've switched over to this new defensive system, this new system under Truck Rudden. Clearly it's not working, so we're going to have to trade it in. We have to learn something else next year. Just a point of order. Trade it in indicates it's a value. We're going to trade it in for something. <laughs> what are we getting? What are we getting for that fucking shit plan? Well, we've got a, got a hex debt. That's what we got. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Sorry I interrupted you. Well, so I'm thinking that the next thing is we're going to be trying something different, right? Over the next... Next off season, we'll come up with something else. They'll coin it something, the new, the new system, the new tweaked system, or the much improved, and we'll see from there. But oh, and and, and therefore, by default, we're going to have to learn that system. Exactly. So, so it's going to take us a while. It'll take us a while to learn the new system. Yeah, good you know, point. Maybe maybe six weeks, maybe eight weeks. Yeah. Who knows? Thereby buying everybody else another year of employment on the Essendon Football Club. God, that's smart. And then we can All do right. another review. Can I just... Um, I've, I've identified learning's twin in Rutten's vocabulary, which is very clear. So he'll say... You know, there were, we had some learnings, but you know, we, are, we are very clear about where we are and what we're trying to do. And at which point every Essendon fan just sits there and goes, well, could you just, just tell us what the fuck that means? Like, very, could, you, could you make it clear for us as well? He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. He's bullshitting. It's, you know, uh, buzzword bingo, you know, corporate lingo, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. It's what you, what you start um, using when you've got no idea. Salute. So, you were saying you were clear? I'm clear. I, I am clear. He needs to go. Honestly, I've said it. I'm just now, you know, we've got no one listen to, listens to this shit anyway, so what's it matter if I repeat <laughs> myself? We have the same issues that have happened all year. They haven't changed and that they will not change. And it doesn't matter what tweak of the system, how we trade this shitty system in for the brand new spanking, you know, truck 2.0, um, defensive, super duper, mocha shocker locker latte, fucking forward, back, whatever. None of it's going to work. Truck has no clue. He's clueless. That's what I'm clear on. Anyway, Jez, ask your fucking question. 2000, my question to you is, will Aaron Francis ever play another game for Essendon Football Club? Good one. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, well, he'll definitely be playing a couple more in the, in the twos, in the VFL. But will he play AFL football again? We'd have to have several injuries, I would have thought, in the fourth line. For him to have a chance, we've got we got Baldwin there. That's that's probably walking up ahead of him. Down back, he's got he's got no chance because we got about six similar players to him. So I think it yeah, basically two metery and and Harry Jones go out. You probably have to bring him back. But it, we we need to somehow extract some value out of him and cut our losses. I think. 
I think that you know, I think that ship sailed around extracting value. But um, let let me ask a supplementary question. Two thousand. What's more likely? He plays for Essendon again. He plays for another team, or he never plays AFL footy again. How would you rank those three, two, one? So that, was that for me? Yeah, yeah. I'm asking you a I you asked, question. I thought you asked Jess. <laughs> um, well, is it three? So we are, we are, go, go again. Go again. What, what's, rank them in order of likelihood. He plays for Eston, he plays for somebody else, or he never plays again? Uh, I think he'll probably play for someone else. He might play for Essendon, and I get yeah, So that, that's my one. Somewhere else, Essendon won't play again. Okay. All right. He's, he's, the thing is, there's not that many big blokes going around. Um, I think there's a shortage across the whole competition of quality forwards, and I'm not saying he is a quality forward. Good. But <laughs> because there is a shortage... It kind of ups the value of you. You kind of... Uh, he's not even serviceable. That's the word I was going to use, though. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll see. We'll see. But surely surely we don't get anything for him in a trade. Yeah. A lot, of head, round. <laughs> a lot of head shaking going on for those yeah. at home. Yeah. All right. Well, um, haven't we got a good... A good couple of weeks coming up. Um, we've got Sydney next at the G, and then Brisbane in Brisbane. Oh, fucking, I'm not looking but, forward to that. Um, but Sam, sandwiched in between the two of them, of course, we have the game of the year. Do we? Yeah, we do. Uh, Sunday, next Sunday, the VFLW, the women play off in the grand final against the Southern Saints. Uh, yes. Over. I, well, I was gonna, I was gonna um, mention that at the end. So. But we can go to it now. So when's the game again, sorry? Sunday the 3rd of July at 12.15pm at Northport Oval in Port Melbourne. Be there. Now, Jez, you've been to a number of games this year. For, for those that have never been and seen our AFLW team, what's, what's your sales pitch? What will they see? I suspect it might be everything that we haven't seen from the senior team many, many times this year, but do you want to expand on that a little bit? Um, fierce competitors, 110% effort, um, a lot of skill, particularly in the forward line. They've come up against the Saints. The Saints won today. They've come up against the Saints next week, who are our bogey team. We haven't beaten them this year. We've drew, drawn with them, so it'll be a massive game, but yeah, now they'll see women playing for, for Essendon with with just great heart and passion and uh, and and competitive ferocity. Well, you fucking sold me, that's for sure. Yeah. We'd be heavily favoured to win, I assume. Yeah, although I, I do think the odds will be closer against the Saints than they would have been against Casey. I think we would have mauled Casey again. Uh, but the Saints, as I say, for whatever reason, they match up well. It'll be... A, It'll be a good one. All right. Well, for everybody, if you want to um, meet Jez, just look for a, a tall, big fellow in a kind of trench coaty type. Is that, is that the attire you're going to wear, mate? Are you standard? Yeah, I'll probably be carrying a birthday cake or two around with me as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. The guy with the 50 glasses. Um, 50 birthday glasses, yeah. Anyway, all right. So next week, what are we reckon Sydney at the SCG presuming Sydney can find the SCG, uh, sorry the MCG because they haven't played us there for a long long time what do we think what a wide open space for Bud, I'm really nervous yeah Bud and his mates oh, so what do you reckon oh, well, guys like Papley just eat us for breakfast Heaney, Buddy, I just think it's going to be blood bloodletting so your prediction is loss by eight goals. Oh, what do we think, uh, Architect? Yeah, I reckon that's reasonable. I think it's um, will be 
inept again, like we were, you know, after half time uh, this week, and they'll just run through us like we're witches' hats. So I reckon eight goals. I reckon that's a reasonable, reasonable margin. If I was, okay. if I was, if I was Sydney, and they don't win by that much, I'd be upset. Yeah, uh, Winsock two thousand. What do you? Everybody's got their pens. They're going to write this down and immediately take some equity off their home, <laughs> load it onto their betting account because they know that this new AI, you're integrating all the data. What, yeah. what does it tell us? Yeah, well, it's um, I've got the last couple results right. So my uh, I had a test run last last week actually and got the result right of the Saints that we were going to win. Um, I thought we were going to lose against West Coast and we did. Sydney coming down here, it's interesting. They they don't come here often. We don't play them here often. Um, but I think they're just they're just far too good for us. I think it'll be a demoralizer. Um, probably forty or fifty point loss. Can you can you be specific? Because there's pe- people are hanging off every word here. Forty seven point loss there. I tell you what, if it lands on forty seven next week. <laughs> I'm I'm quitting my day job and I'm just going to bet. Uh, um, do you do horses as well? Two thousand? No, no, not for a long time. No. Um, architect, get that statement of requirements document ready. Right, <laughs> we're going to do another another build. <laughs> Windsock three thousand is is that what you're asking <laughs> for? That's right. All right. Well, um, anybody else got anything to say before we bugger off? No, just wanted to say, check out Something About Cake, our wonderful sponsor. If you need a cake for all your cake needs. James, did you get a cake from Something About Cake in any of these 27 birthday parties you had? No, 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 and that's fine. She's very, very, very busy at the moment. I got a, I got a lovely gift from her, very generous gift. You didn't pay for one? No. No, no, I didn't okay. pay for one. No, no you, only, you only wanted a freebie. You only wanted yeah, a freebie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll get we'll get on to something about cake. Thanks to everyone that listened, and we'll see you next week. Go bombers. Go bombers. Hey boys. <laughs>